everyone to Escapist Posture Series. Uh, we, uh, we are here in the Escapist Crossing Box. It's me, Richard. It's Mr. Lucas. Um, we're going to talk about posture because we've understood how important posture is and we also understood that a lot of people don't know what causes good posture or what even good posture is. So uh, Lucas will be demonstrating some good looks uh, and some good posture uh, in these videos. We're going to do a series of uh, seven different videos. Today and the first one we're going to start with to talk about what is good posture. Um, good posture is begins from from the feet up till your head, and uh, many people think about posture just being something with the shoulders, but it's actually very important to look at what's happening already at the feet. So somebody who is standing, you can al already see if if he is kind of hanging in one direction or so, trying to find stability in, uh, in some, some of the joints, that's usually an uh, indication that posture is not uh, really sufficient or efficient. But yeah, we can look from the side, so we turn to the side like this. Um, typical posture when you sit at the desk is something like that. You have the nice kyphosis happening in the back, and yeah, you're kind of tilting forward with the head. Uh, you can even try to tilt even more forward and I want to look up. Exactly, you see that those creases here? That's also what's happening in the neck. And usually a big indicator of that you'll get some kind of headaches, some kind of tension, uh, pain and stuff like that happening. So we're gonna walk you through some stuff you can do to uh, from the bottom till the top to make you yeah having a better posture and um, leads to second thing um, we like to start from the ground um, look at what kind of shoes you're you're wearing. Uh, just like a, a, a building, you have to have a stable foundation. If you have a very bad foundation, that will tilt the entire building, right? So, we have a couple of shoes that we're going to look at. And these are typical, I would say, training shoes, but also maybe leisure shoes. Um, the, thing, the shoes that we like to use are usually the um, Either the, the Nano ones from from uh, Reebok. They you also have like Nike, Metcon, and so on. They they have a not so high heel. And it's more flat uh, profile, but uh, still these might be a bit too high. Um, I also use, usually prefer uh, the shoes that we actually are wearing. It's the strike movements, uh, also very flat uh, shoes. And then we have the normal uh, BTR. Yeah, it's BTR. This has a bit more uh, yeah, cushioning. And then we have the traditional like sneaker one, which is not super bad, but if you look like um, normal runner shoes, they're usually very high heels. And if you look at women's shoes, then, then they're really high heels. Right. And what happens when you have high heels, um, we made a post about this, but and you can turn uh, to the side so we can see your profile. If you, if you stand, if you are on your heels, we, we can just demonstrate it by that you're standing on something like that. So suddenly the angle of the tibia uh, is not, not 90 degrees in the, in the uh, in the heel, and when you walk like this and uh, run like this for many, many years, you will simply start to lose uh, capacity to flex this area. 
But yeah, the angle of, of the leg that comes up to the hip will start to tilt the, the pelvis in the wrong direction. So uh, he will start to need to compensate with his pelvis. So his spine will now start to arch more. And you get this kind of stripper's butt. Um, and this leads to uh, more compensation, a lot of uh, uh, pressure in the upper upper parts of the shoulder, and then he will need more pow uh, power to keep his head up. And there you have like the, uh, the tension headaches uh, happening. Super uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, so that's the first thing to look at is to look at your shoes. Uh, if you're not doing that, uh, everything you're doing is just you try to cover paint uh, a cracked wall, you know, instead of just fixing the wall. Um, second part we wanted to look at, or third part, uh, is uh, since most people work uh, in an office, uh, there's a bit of a debate uh, standing or sitting, uh, which is the best. Now there are many people talking about you have to stand now, everyone has to have a standing desk. And yes, it's very good to have a standing desk, but it's, no use to have, it's not useful to have a standing desk if you're using high heels, for example, or if you're wearing bad shoes. Um, but also, it's not totally 100% beneficial just to stand all the time. We're made to move, so if you can move, when you work, meaning you can sit for a while, you can stand for a while, that's going to have a huge impact on how you feel and also uh, your, your energy levels will uh, benefit from that. Um, sec uh, second from that, uh, we're going to look at how to sit and how to stand. Um, let's see here. How to sit and how to stand. All right, let's start with the standing. So when you stand, we can look from the side. Uh, we say that you have a standing desk. Then we, we can try to do the best for ourselves to create stability in the shoulders. And that is by creating uh, external rotation in the shoulders. So you simply turn your palms up like that, then you can bring the elbows down, and now you can turn the hands over. Now suddenly the shoulders are much more stable, and it's much harder for him to push the head forward. So if the head is kind of locked into this position. Now if we relax here, it's going to be much easier for him to tilt forward the head and get that uh, tilt in his neck happening and also the internal rotation where, where the hands are and elbows are sticking out like that, which is very typical to see in, at an office. Now there's a huge stress on his neck from, from the weight of his head just pushing down on the spine. Okay, now let's have a look at sitting. Yeah. Very typical way to sit is to sit like this, have a nice rounded back, uh, and if we would look at how it looks like in his pelvis here, you will see like his pelvis is tilting down as a, uh, if you imagine like a dog pooing, this is kind of the position of, of, this, of this hip right now. So there's no engagement here in the sitting. Um, and also, since he's in this position already, we can also start to see that there are a lot of large muscle groups inside his spine here, going to his legs, called the hip flexors or the psoas and iliopsoas, which, when you sit a lot, tends to get shorter. Okay, and yeah, let's have a look at how how he should sit. So stand up. When you sit, uh, 
you should create external rotations uh, in, in your feet. So you screw your feet to the ground, you squeeze your butt, and you, to exaggerate this, you can even bring the arms forward, just like you did before, creating external rotation. And now, slowly control um, by moving the hip back and sit down. Exactly. And now, now if you do this your hundredth time, you don't have to do it in this kind of slow motion. You can do it quite fast. If, if, it's, if you do it many times, it's going to be the natural way of doing it when you sit down. Right? Okay. Next one. We're going to talk about something we do every day. Uh, from, from one years old until we almost die, and it's walking. Now we do 300 and si uh, oh, sorry, 365 days per year. We should be doing 10,000 steps a day. Uh, walking. So 10,000 steps times 365 days per year. So 3.6 million steps in one year. And if you do that in bad shoes, and also if you tend to walk with your feet turned out, uh, you will also start to have effects uh, upstream in your body. So let's look at the feet. Uh, Lucas is a bit stiff in his, in his hips and he has, uh, <laughs> he, he has not um, the best mobility, nobody does, but we can still try to ha have this as a, as a life goal or day goal is that when I walk, can I walk with my feet straight? Right? Feels a bit strange if you are not used to it. But if we look at it from the side, um, or we can look at it from the front. Straight. So we can, exactly, so we can come closer and we can look at the feet. So if you turn the foot out and then uh, you look at the knee up here, and he bends his knee. See, the knee comes inside his feet and it creates a lot of extra um, tension on the insertion. His kneecap is not tracking uh, straight over his knee, but it's tracking over, uh, over the bones inside, inside the knee. So, but when, when we go straight with the feet and now we flex, so move forward, has to come over his feet, right? And uh, by doing that, he's constantly working on his mobility uh, or his normal range of motion in his uh, joint, uh, feet joints, right? But when you do with your feet out, you're not using the dorsal flexion in your ankle as it should be used. So as a small thing you can work on, when you uh, don't have access to gym or you don't train or whatever, you can still try to walk with your feet straight and that will benefit not only your feet but your knees and your hips and your shoulders. So start from the feet and the rest will follow. Okay. take a normal uh, backpack. So, the normal backpack is probably the most beneficial if you want to carry something. Um, it is better to have a double-sided backpack so you even out the burden on both shoulders. Now, a very common 
uh, see is people walking around with it like that. Suddenly, he will need to compensate by pulling up one shoulder on one side, and suddenly we have this crazy tilt happening, uh, not only in this uh, upper part, but also in his, uh, in his pelvic. So suddenly, we have a lot of things uh, not working motorically as it should be. But yeah, just wearing a normal backpack, people tend to also have, have to put their shoulders forward to kind of protect and, and pull that weight forward. And that will also affect your, your posture immensely. Okay, so we have um, also another bag very typical sports bag or maybe a, like a bag with a computer inside of it that people tend to use on one side and when you carry a bag on one side you create a lot of pressure on that side and you try to compensate by pushing that side up and suddenly you're walking a bit tilted uh, maybe not you, you're going to try to compensate and you will start to try to uh, compensate yourself up, but it's then the hip that is going to start to compensate for that tilt. Um, so th these kinds of bags, if you really want to use them, make sure you're switching sides often, but be aware that this also affects your posture, especially if you have it, you know, every day at work or school or so. Okay, um, we're going to look at so stretches you can do at, at work. Uh, one stretch that I always uh, want people to do as much as possible is something called the couch stretch. Uh, it's not it's not invented by me or anything. It's from Kelly Starrett. Uh, couch stretch. You simply you need a couch. Or you can have a wall. Um, let's show them, Lucas. Yeah. So, for especially for people that are sitting a lot, this one is the a key stretch for you to kind of sort out the mess that you put yourself in. Too. So, uh, we're going to put the knee all the way into the corner. You can drop that leg down if you need. And you want to get the foot straight behind the butt. Oh, here's somebody that's very stiff here. And you're going to start in this position by squeezing your butt, pushing the hip forward, and you're going to spend some time here. You can spend time on the couch, watching TV or something. And the more time you spend here, the more you will start to be able to raise yourself up. And oh, my uh, pants are a problem though today. Yeah. <laughs> Don't wear too tight pants for this kind of stretch. But yeah, normal range of motion would be to have uh, be fully straight up in this position. I wish I my best. We don't we don't want to injure you. <laughs> but yeah. Huh? Yeah, nice. So you want to spend about 5 to 10 minutes of this a day. 10 minutes is probably a minimum if you're uh, very stiff. Like me. Okay. Now, second stretch to use uh, at the office or at home. We're going to do some uh, something called... You will need yourself. Uh, Luke is going to demonstrate. Um, so back to the wall. Yeah, all the way. And try to get the back flat to the wall. And now that you bring the arms out like that, try to bring the the, uh, the, uh, the shoulders in. Yeah, you bend the arms. You can relax a bit. And now. His goal is trying to extend the arms, keeping the arms close to the wall all the time, and go up and down. 
This, this one is brutal, but it's very effective. And you try not to compensate by coming out of the wall from back to yeah. so uh, at one point Lucas will be able to marry his hands up here and they will live happily ever after <sighs> but take a couple of years uh, yeah it takes a couple of years to lose that capacity but uh, it goes faster to bring it back you just have to spend a couple of minutes a day working on that try to go to an end range and back and uh, slowly we'll start to get there. Okay, thanks for uh, following this. If you have any questions about this, then shoot them to us. Uh, yeah, subscribe to all our uh, damn channels. We're, uh, we're on Tumblr, Pinterest, <laughs> YouTube. No, I don't know. Okay, cheers, take care.